This works. Can everyone hear me? I was asked to talk about five ways an employer will get sued. And I've really made it to eight ways. And so I'm going to talk about eight ways an employer is likely to get sued, or certain to get sued, or both, and then some, some ways an employer can avoid getting sued. So let me start with one of my favorites, and that is the employer retaliates and against an employee who complains about violations of state or federal law. Here's the scenario. The employee complains to somebody in management about harassment, or discrimination, or wage and hour violations for that matter. And the complaints can be verbal or they can be written. And all of a sudden, bad things happen to the employee. Now I know none of you in this room would do that to your employees for, for making complaints, but I have to tell you, it happens all the time. And there are some really blatant examples of what we see. Uh, an employee is suddenly terminated or an employee is demoted, or their pay is cut. But more often, we see some very subtle forms of retaliation, uh, like duties and responsibilities are changed. Uh, the employee is given an assignment that nobody wants. Uh, the employer takes away resources that are necessary for the employee to do their job. The employer piles on the employee so much that there's no way the employee can get the job done. Even the, the employee is suddenly put in the basement office with no light. We've, had, we've seen that case. Um, several times last year we've seen the case where the employer tells other employees that they cannot talk to this particular employee, isolating them. They're told they cannot attend meetings, go to retreats. Um, basically, it can be summed up by a, a case we had where the management employee said, when we want to get rid of somebody, we alienate them, isolate them, and make them so uncomfortable that they want to leave. If you retaliate, the employee will litigate. Oh, and one other thing, just, just to be clear, the law prohibits, clearly prohibits, employers from retaliating against employees who oppose discriminatory conduct by making complaints or who file a complaint with a state or federal agency. Again, if you retaliate, the employee will litigate. So that's number one. Number two way to get sued, make stuff up about the employee. This happens time and time again. An employee is fired. After they're fired, things are put in their personnel file. And I know none of you would do it, but I've seen it literally dozens of times. Warnings are put in the personnel file that aren't signed by the employees, by the employee. Warnings the employee never saw. I've even seen warnings put in the file that are actually signed on the employee's behalf by management. A and there's warnings that are put in that are backdated. So what happens? The employee requests the file, personnel file, gets it, and suddenly they're suspicious and they're angry. And they bring it to an attorney. And the attorney says, well, geez, if you made stuff up about the employee, you must be hiding something. This must be a pretext for discrimination. And next thing you know, you're involved in a lawsuit. So point number two, if you fabricate, the employee will litigate. You don't need to put things in the file after the fact. Way to get sued number three, bad mouth an employee who has been terminated or let go. Uh, there's a number of ways that this can be done, and I'll tell you a war story in a second. You can talk to the press and say derogatory things about the employee. You can talk to coworkers and say derogatory things about the employee. You can talk to prospective employers and say derogatory things about the employee. What will happen? One, you're going to face a potential defamation case. Two, you're going to face a claim potentially for interference with contractual relations. But most important, you're going to, to motivate that employee to go to an attorney and say, is there any claim that I can make against the employer here? There's really no reason for employers to say anything. 
uh, it can be handled professionally and if you need to interact with prospective employers you can merely even if this person was a bad actor you can merely say it's our policy to give the, the position held in the dates of employment that's it so let me give you the war story I spent two weeks ago I tried a four-day jury trial that's been going on four years uh, involving uh, an employer who made comments all over the press this is a this was a public employer about my guy uh, and they were published and they ruined his life and four days jury deliberated for six hours awarded my guy hundred seventy five thousand dollars now the point of this story is there was no reason whatsoever that that employer needed to go out and make these comments they were gratuitous it was a matter of public interest but it can be done in a neutral way all that employer did was give my guy a real reason to pursue this case so in the old days and, and most of you probably don't remember this but it used to be loose lips sink ships I think this was a World War II reference maybe or maybe the Korean but, uh, war but really what loose lips do in the employment context is they cost employers a lot of money think about the case I just talked about four years of litigation costs four years of lost time that the employer spent bad publicity all because somebody wanted to go out in the press and make themselves look good and run my guy down it's just not necessary number four ignore complaints of harassment or discrimination or violation of other laws a lot of employers just say you know what if I put my head in the sand if I don't do anything this is going to go away and what happens is it doesn't go away and the employee quits but that doesn't end the story because when the employee quits the employee has what's called a constructive discharge claim the employee can say I made this known nothing was done my work conditions were so intolerable that no reasonable person in my situation would stay I quit and now I can treat this as if I were discharged that's called constructive discharge we had a case about three years ago where the employer basically said you've raised the complaint okay you're put on leave then the employer did its investigation and said well you can come back but we're not going to do anything about it well that didn't go so well for the employer in that situation so what do you need to do as an employer um, instead of sticking your head in the sand one do an investigation do it promptly do it quickly Two, keep the employee informed of what's going on tell the employee we're doing an investigation we'll get back to you and three take prompt corrective or remedial action based on the results of the investigation number five uh, withhold payment when an employee is terminated withhold payment of wages or accrued benefits um, the, the the worst example is an employee is fired and and then the employer decides well we should make some deductions from the check uh, because of this or that uh, the second well let me just go back to that second can you do that yeah if it's appropriate but why would you want to because the reason employees sue is because they feel they're treated unfairly uh, and they're upset and angry all you're doing is making an issue over something that shouldn't be an issue the second one and I, I know some of you have this in your handbooks accrued benefits when an employee is terminated there's always the question of do they get paid for accrued vacation sick paid time off now there are employee handbooks that say if you're terminated as opposed to resigning you're not going to get paid those accrued benefits but we're usually not talking about a huge amount of money and when you fight about that and you don't give them the accrued benefits what do they do they go to an attorney and the attorney says well geez let's look at this maybe you have some claims under the employment laws so you have to run you, you run the risk and you have to think about does it make sense just to give them the accrued vacation sick time etc as opposed to running the risk of uh, having them go to an attorney to cause a fight over it number six here's my favorite challenge unemployment compensation there is nothing that makes an employee more mad 
than when unemployment compensation is challenged. Now, there are times when there's good reason to challenge it. Standard is, everyone knows, a willful disregard of the employer's interest. So the employee stole money, hey, go for it. The employee assaulted somebody, hey, go for it. But other than those egregious situations, there's really not a good reason to challenge unemployment. Because one, you're not gonna meet the standard, and two, that's probably the biggest thing that causes employees to come in and see attorneys is, they're upset about their unemployment compensation being challenged. But even worse is, and most, a lot of employers don't realize this, you're, if you have a hearing, an unemployment compensation hearing, on the, on the issue of whether the employee should get benefits, that is in front of an administrative law judge, it is recorded, and it is under oath. What you as an employer say there, which may be for, before an attorney is ever involved, you're locked into that position and that testimony. It is sworn testimony, and if you're sued later on, what you say, that those statements can be used against you in a subsequent proceeding. It's pretty hard to go into the unemployment compensation hearing and say, here's the reason we terminated this employee, and then later when you talk to an attorney and the attorney says, well, geez, maybe it was a different reason to change your story. You're locked in at that point, and anything you say can and be can and will be used against you. Number seven, embarrass or humiliate the employee. And that you wouldn't believe this, but this is, a, this is a big one. I've heard it again and again. I wouldn't have come to see an attorney except the way they treated me. How do you embarrass or humiliate an, an employee? You, you terminate the employee, and this is in the middle of the day, and you, security or management, walk out with the employee in front of all the employees' coworkers to their cubicle. And then you stand there while all the employees, other employees are looking, and watch while they pack all their belongings, and then you escort the employee back out in front of all, all the coworkers. That is embarrassing, that is humiliating, and there's been any number of times that that fact alone caused an employee to see a lawyer and pursue a lawsuit. So, if you humiliate, the employee will litigate. Number eight. This is the last one on the line of uh, uh, ways to get sued. The personnel file. All of you know you're required by Wisconsin law to keep a personnel file on, on people. And uh, the first thing many employees often do when they're terminated is they make a request for the personnel file. The law requires you to provide that personnel file to them within seven business days of the request. For whatever reason, many employers either just ignore the request or they delay the request. And when they ignore the request, what happens? The employee calls up an attorney and says, guess what? My employer won't give me the personnel file. And all of a sudden you have an attorney that's uh, involved in the process and you don't need the attorney involved in the process. So when you get the request, comply promptly and don't charge the employee hundreds of dollars for copies, which we have seen charge a reasonable rate. All right, so ways to avoid getting sued. Uh, how many of you, well I won't say how many, probably the guys, maybe not the ladies here, um, Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse. Anyone see Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze? All right. Remember when he was talking to all the bouncers and he was the cooler, and what did he say? He said, be nice. Be nice until it's time not to be nice. And if there's one thing I would suggest to avoid getting sued is be nice. At the termination meeting, be nice. When you're getting their personal belongings, be nice. When they ask for your personnel file, be nice. When they apply for unemployment compensation, be nice. Unless there's a reason to not be nice. But 90% of cases can be avoided if you treat the person with respect, you treat the person fairly, and you're nice to them because they're not gonna be motivated and fired up to see an attorney and sue you. 
Number two, before, their, before the termination, if that's going to occur, review the case, review the situation with your HR representative or with an attorney. And specifically what you want to do is look at, are there any protected statuses or categories that we have to worry about? Does this person have a disability? Is there an age issue? Is there a gender issue? Uh, and you can use your HR person or you can use your attorney. Um, look at, has this person engaged in a protected activity? Have they made complaints about wage and hour issues? Have they made complaints about harassment? Have they made complaints about discrimination? Are there legitimate, non-discriminatory reasons for this employment action? Is there documentation of the reasons for the employment action. If you go through a checklist, if you go through a review with your HR person or your attorney, uh, you're not gonna make a mistake of jumping into a situation where, hey, there should be red flags about terminating this person and we need to proceed with caution. Number two, in, in ways to avoid getting sued. B, or maybe it's number three, now I lost track. Yeah, number three. Be accurate and thorough in performance evaluations. I assume most of you uh, have a handbook, and I assume most of you in the handbook say we're going to give performance evaluations every six months or every year. The problem is, oftentimes, those performance evaluations are overstated, not accurate, not thorough. Let me give you three examples. Uh, we had a case where in the performance evaluation it, it stated, Honest to God, I would trust this person with my life. Well, this person then sued the employer, and one of the defenses was, well, uh, this person isn't honest and doesn't have an integrity. Well, it's pretty hard to make that argument when you have in writing in a performance review, I would trust this person with my life. Another example, productivity is excellent. Then they're terminated for poor productivity. Well, you got a problem or gets along well with coworkers, then they're terminated for poor relationship with their coworkers. You need to be accurate. You need to make sure your people who are doing the reviews aren't too nice. They don't need to be mean, but they need to be accurate. Finally, probably one of the most important things I see is if you're sued, or when you're, well, when you terminate somebody, and then actually if you're sued, you can often avoid thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars of fees and costs and time uh, by simply having a resignation agreement and release. Oftentimes, an employee, before they're represented, represented uh, or even if they're represented, sees a couple thousand dollars in severance and will happily take that and sign off on a complete, full, and final release which precludes them from ever coming back and suing you. It's probably the best money you'll ever spend uh, in that type of situation. And if you, if you are sued, many employers take a hardline approach. You know what? This is BS. We didn't do anything wrong, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, three years down the line, and thousands of dollars into attorney's fees, and faced with the possibility of having a, something in the paper about how employees were treated unfairly, the employer often thinks, you know, maybe if I would have spent two or five thousand dollars in settlement, got a, uh, and had a uh, confidentiality agreement saying, I'm not gonna talk about this, that would have been money well spent. And so if you are sued, Think about that and choose your, choose your lawyers carefully because you want a lawyer who's looking out for your best interest, which is to get things resolved quickly, expediently, and for little money. Not a, 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 an attorney who is going to think about their best interest that, hey, we want to get our fifty or $100,000 out of this case before we try to settle it. So I'll end by talking about comments you should not make, comments you probably will not believe have been made, but comments from cases I've been involved in. I think there's like 18 of them. This is a difficult place for a woman to work. 
Now that statement was actually made in somebody's performance review by management, which is not such great evidence. For management, women should not make as much money as men. We are concerned about her long-term potential with the company on a health basis. That's not good for disability issues. Women should be home baking cookies. Now, and these, these are statements that were actually made. Martin Luther King Day, oh, that end holiday. Women are not paid as much because they do not need to support a family. That is a fair salary for a woman. We need more men managers. Here's some of the harassment uh, uh, type of sexual harassment. If you were a screen door, I would bang you all night long. I would like to lick the paint off you. Don't your large breasts get in the way? The, again, these are <laughs> this is a job for women and minorities. That, that was actually in a construction case, and the women were being given the job nobody wanted, flagging while the men were doing the construction work. I don't have time for women problems. A woman was having uh, her period, and she wanted to take a break to be allowed to be relieved so she could change what she needed to change, and that was the response. And as a result, she stood on the side of the road, flagging vehicles and bled through her pants. The jury didn't like that very much. Um, accommodating your disability is not a priority. I want her out of here regardless of the cost. You are too old for this job. I am sick of you being sick. Statements that are made, statements you don't want to make, statements if they come to your attention, you want to and need to do something about. Thanks for your attention and enjoy the rest of the program.